Hey everybody, Doug here. So I wanted to do a sort of quick video here today talking about uh, cable labels. So this is one of those topics that's maybe not necessarily super exciting, but it's one of those things that can really make your life a lot easier if you uh, use proper labeling on your cables to keep things organized. And it also improves your image quite a bit with your customers, like if your cables are neatly labeled and it makes it really easy to find your way around. And people just really love to see that, that you're taking the time to organize and keep things neat. So, and before I want to dive into that though, first of all, I got to acknowledge one thing. It's pretty obvious for those of you who are watching this video at the time it's live. I am now shooting in my new studio. So welcome to DJP Studio One. It's not entirely done, but it's done enough that I can actually use it at this point. I'm going to save a tour for a later video. I've still got some little bit of spit and polish I need to put on the, the room, uh, especially with things like lighting and uh, some of the textures on some of the walls and whatnot. But it's functional at this point, and so I'm going to be shooting in here a lot more moving forward. So anyway, so yeah, look forward to that video coming hopefully within the next couple of weeks. So it depends on how much time I have to get things sort of finished. All right, so back to the topic at hand. I'm talking about cable labels. So we've probably all seen cables that look like or labels that look like this right handwritten wrapped around a cable and we've probably all seen those same labels six months a year multiple years down the road after they're made and see that the ink is smudged if not disappeared entirely and it just doesn't look great and there is definitely a better way now, what I've been doing for the last several years, it's not the best solution, and it's kind of worked, is what's called a flag. So if we take a look at this, I just use an off-the-shelf off the label maker like you'd find at any office supply store, and even other stores as well. You print a label, make it long enough to wrap around the cable with a little bit of extra, and uh, then that becomes your label for your, for your cable. That's called a flag, for obvious reasons. And I've been doing that quite a lot, but... It's not the solution I've wanted to land on. I've, I've seen some much professional, more, much more professional options for labeling cables, and I wanted to get, get to that at some point. But I knew that professional label makers that can do the high-quality labels, super high-quality labels, were kind of expensive. And so I kind of avoided that. And within the last year or so, I discovered that there are some much more affordable options out there. I'm going to demonstrate a couple of them here today uh, in order to produce... Very high quality, very professional labels for your cables. So I'll go through and talk about each one of those. But with that said, now if we come over here, we'll see that instead of handwritten, I've also got I've got computer printed, like nicely printed, like uh, works works really really nice. The wrap around the cable. But then I come over here, and this is my, this is the one that I've really wanted to achieve for a long time, and that's these heat shrink labels, where you actually print directly on heat shrink and then put that on your cable, and that looks super professional. It looks like it's a professionally made cable, something that you paid to have done somewhere. And this is the one that I always thought was not achievable without spending a ton of money. Well, that's not the case any longer. And there is a label maker from a very well-known company I'll get to here in just a bit that's capable of printing these things, and I was out the door, everything I needed for under $200, including the labels. So super exciting that we have this option to us. All right, so let's uh, just briefly go through how each one of these is produced. So these flags, these can work pretty well, but they do have some, some issues. Uh, the big issue I have with these is that over time, the adhesive kind of, I don't know if it wears away or what, or due to heat kind of loses its uh, ability to stick. And you'll find that within not too much time that these will actually start moving around. They'll be able to they'll slide up and down the cable, maybe even, uh, maybe even slide past uh, way past the end, and so it's hard to find where they are, where they're at. But uh, yeah, so I mean, it, it's 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 a solution that works, but it's certainly not ideal. Uh, it's certainly the most affordable option that can look sort of professional. Uh, so let me demonstrate very quickly how how to do that. So I'm going to get out my absolute ancient label maker. I've had this thing for probably 15 years or so. So I'm going to power that on. Now this is actually a pretty good opportunity to talk about the text that you put on a label. Because there are some things that I've kind of learned over the years doing this. That some th there are certain things that make a little bit more sense and they're super, super helpful. So uh, my methodology is, first of all, to put my company name. So I'm, I'm just going to shorten it to DJP. So I'll type in DJP. And I'm going to hit space. And then the next thing that I do when I'm 
uh, when I'm labeling cables, like typically I, I do a bunch of cables all at once. So I'll buy a batch of cables and then label all those at one time. And it, it's hard to keep track of like which lot number, which batch number I'm working with. And so the technique I've kind of landed on is instead of using a number to indicate which group of cables it is, I'll use a, a word, like a name or an English word or something like that. So so I'm, I'm going to use the word BORT, B-O-R-T here. So I put that in next. And then uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit enter just to go to a second line. And then f within that group of cables, I assign it a number. And then this is just arbitrary. You can use anything you want. I'm just, For purposes of demo, I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4. Or you just start at 1 or start at 10 and go by 10s. Whatever. Whatever system works for you, you, uh, you can do that. But, yeah, just give it a, a, a number to differentiate it from the other cables that you're doing within a batch. And then the last thing I put on there is actually the length of the cable, which you might think, well, that's going to be kind of obvious, isn't it? Well, when a cable is spooled up, it's not so obvious, and it's really nice to be able to just grab a cable, look at that label, and see what its length is by looking at the, that, the, the label that's there. So I'm going to say 50 foot, so 50 FT, and then at that point, I have most of the text that's in there. Now, you notice with the flag that I have the text on two sides. So... What I have to do is I have to enter everything twice. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to arrow up to the first line, and then I'm going to put 15 spaces, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to type the same things again, DJP space BORT. And then I'm going to arrow down 15 spaces again. And then cable one number 1, 2, 3, 4, space 50 FT. Okay? All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and print that. Now that was that will give me a, a label that's long enough. Notice that I want to call this out. Like most of these label makers have a little bit of waste they they uh, spit out every time you print a label. Let's keep that in mind. All right, so there we go. So there we've got our our cable cable label. This is our flag that's going to go on there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that on there. Most of these modern labels uh, make it easy to apply because they split down the middle. You don't have to worry about trying to peel up the edge, which I'm super grateful for, especially when you're doing a hundred of these at a time. And yes, I have hundred, done hundreds of these at a time. Think back to when I was wiring my trailer. And it was hundreds and hundreds at a time. So there we go. So I apply it just like that. So I like to line up the end and then sort of work backwards from there. That gives you a better chance of having it actually line up, um, not have too much sticking out on one end versus the other. But that's what you end up with. So um, you got a flag on there. And the text is pretty readable. Again, the major downside to this is that with time, that is adhesive is going to break loose and that thing's going to move around on you. So uh, if you're going to use this method, you might want to consider just on a schedule redoing your labels every few years or whenever you notice that some of the labels are starting to uh, to break loose. These, these generally won't tear on you. They're made of a pretty strong material. Uh, so... In terms of their overall longevity, aside from moving around, they should last for quite a long time. Okay? All right, so let's talk about the next one, which is the handwritten. So, move the label maker out of the way. Out of the way. We're done with that. Uh, hand, handwritten labels. Um, you see these everywhere. I've always hated these things, and I've intentionally refused to use them. Um, so... Yeah, typically these will come on a sheet, and you'll get a whole bunch of labels on one sheet. But the way that they work is you'll take and you'll write the text for the label using like a felt tip marker like this. So I'm going to say, I'm not going to have room to put all that stuff on there, so I'm going to say DJP is a company. And then instead of like Bort, I'm going to say B, and it's batch 1, or lot 1 of, of B, and then 50 foot. So that will be the text that I put on that label. Uh, again, these make it nice and easy there. They peel the back and then come over here. And you work with these by putting the text portion of, uh, on the cable first. You want to get that lined up really well. It needs to be straight up and down the cable. Be real careful about rubbing it because that ink will rub off. And then there we go. Let's wrap the, the tail around the rest of the cable. So, so that's what it looks like when it's applied. It's not terrible, but I, I really hate the handwritten thing. Uh, and the biggest issue with these is over time that ink will bleed. It doesn't matter what the manufacturer says. 
it's going to bleed and it's going to get blurry. And at some point it's going to be, it's going to look ugly. And yeah. And I've also found that some of the adhesive on some of these will get gummy over time and that becomes kind of a mess. So it's, I'd consider this a better option than the flags, but it's certainly not my favorite option whatsoever. Okay, all right, so that's when we get into the next option that I talked about at the beginning of the video, which is printed versions of these. And so for that, I'm gonna bring out my Epson label maker. This has become one of my new best friends, one of my favorite toys. This is the LWPX700. They have other models in the line. I landed on this one because of its ability to print on the heat shrink tubing. I'm gonna demonstrate that here in a couple of minutes. But this thing is under $200. Um, and the labels for this are actually quite affordable, unlike the ones from my brother unit. So I think this is one of those where they use the razor blade model, where they sell the printer, the label pr printer for not that much money, and then they make it up on the labels themselves. Epson's not doing that. Uh, they charge what I would call a fair rate for the label maker itself, and then the cartridges themselves are pretty affordable for what they are. So before I actually print on one. I'll pull one of these out here. So this is one of those self-laminating cable wrap style. So that's what I use for this. And we're going to reproduce this one right here. And I'll show you how that's done. But we just put that in, in, the, in the label maker like that. It comes ready to, ready to go. So you just pop that in there. And then we'll power the label maker on. Uh, we're going to say we want a one inch label. There we go. All right. So I'm going to insert my company logo on here because that's something that's an option with this. Uh, you can down, it has software you can download on uh, on your computer and then connect this via USB and download images directly into it. So I've got those loaded in here. So I'm going to say downloaded, recall, and then I'm going to use my DJP logo. So insert that. And then put a little space in there after that. Uh, give it a little bit of a breathing room. And then I'm going to say Bort. Space, one, two, three, four, space, 50. And then instead of saying FT, I'm just going to do an apostrophe, indicate 50 feet. Okay, so just like that, it's ready to go. So I'll hit, go ahead and hit print, and it's going to do its thing. Uh, one of the big advantages that, that this one has over a lot of the other ones I've looked at is like it's able to reverse the labels inside when it's, while they're inside the, the label maker, which means you don't end up with that waste that I talked about. So the other one, like every time you print a label, you're wasting, what's that, about an inch? This one doesn't do that. So you end up using a lot less uh, label material uh, when you're using this model versus a lot of the other ones. And that's one of the things I really like about these. Uh, the other thing that I should mention about this is it has a mode, and I do have it enabled right now, where you can, you can chain print a whole bunch of labels, and it will do a half cut. So it cuts through the label material without cutting through the backing. So then you end up with a long strip that has all your labels on it. So when you're going to apply them, you just pull them off one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, and then apply them one at a time. And this one, uh, there's just a tiny, 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 like what's that, about an eighth of an inch um, of quote-unquote waste, and then the label itself. So I'll go ahead and peel, peel that off there. Struggling with that just a bit. There we go. Okay, there's my label. And then I can apply that to my cable. So we're going to this end. So again, you want to line that up nice and straight. If it's off, it probably won't wrap properly. The other thing is you want to make sure that the, the cable itself is actually straight as well. Otherwise, you'll end up with wrinkles in your label, which, which you don't want. And having said that, there actually is a tiny little label and a tiny little bit wrinkle in there. But uh, that's what your end result looks like right there. So I've got my company logo, the name, um, lot number, and then the length of the cable. So obviously not 50 feet, but for the purposes of demo, that's what we're end up with. Okay, so that's that. Now, again, my favorite option, but this only works if you're terminating your own cables, they don't already have ends on them, is to use heat shrink tubing. So I'm gonna swap the cartridge out here with one that's heat shrink tubing. So this and the end diameter after uh, after you shrink it on this is one is a, hat, is a quarter of an inch, but they have other sizes as well. So uh, the width of the tape is actually a half inch. Again, it shrinks it down. So it's a two to one heat shrink. So I'll pop that into the label maker. Now this maker automatically detects what type of tape you put in there. So you don't have to go through any sort of configuration or anything like that. You just pop it in and it's good to go. All right, so I'm gonna just uh, make another label. So I'm gonna insert my company logo here. So downloaded, recall, DJP. 
insert that, and then I'm going to do a space, and then I say bort space one two three four space fifty, and then the apostrophe to indicate feet. And with that, I'm ready to go. So I'll just go ahead and hit print, and it's going to print on heat shrink tubing, uh, and I'll apply that here to the cable in just a second. So, all right, so there it is. That's what it looks like. And I'm going to turn that off and get that out of the way here. So that's what the heat shrink actually looks like. Now it's pretty flat. It comes out super flat. So uh, you have to open that up, but just a little squeeze will take care of that. And from there, it's going to be a little tricky because I, I have a flag that I need to work over here. But I'll wrap that flag neatly around there. And then I'm going to slide this onto the cable. There we go. Okay. And move that to the end. So, and then position that where I want it. And then I'll get grab my heat gun. It's going to be kind of loud. I apologize for that. But here we go. And then just apply heat. And it doesn't take very long. It's, uh, it's only going to take a few seconds. And it will already be done. So, there we go. Yeah. It's already done. So now I have a professional printed high quality label on my cable that's uh, made of a heat shrink that shrinks exactly to the diameter of my cable. It just looks super neat and that's not going anywhere. That's that's very much attached to that cable. It's, it's not going to slide around or anything like that. So again, my my preferred way to go. Now, uh, I should also mention that like whenever I label my cables, I put labels on both ends. That way when I'm setting up or trying to t troubleshoot something in an event, uh, it's really easy for me to, to sh shout to somebody on the other end, like, hey, I'm looking at cable board one, two, three, four. Um, is that the one you're looking at on the other end? So it makes it just super easy to try and troubleshoot what's going on if both ends of the cable are actually labeled. So it just, that's just my standard practice. It makes it so much easier to try and figure out where signals are going when your cables are all properly labeled. So yeah, that's going to about do it. Uh, if you have any questions about this, you can certainly leave those in the comment section down below or join us over on Discord. I've got a server set up specifically for talking about video production related topics. And yeah, so I'd love, love to see you all there. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Or if you haven't already subscribed and you do watch the channel regularly, you'll actually see more videos if you, if you subscribe. And YouTube doesn't always recommend videos if you're not a subscriber to a channel. So if you want to make sure you're keeping up on all the videos that I'm releasing, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, I, again, I will be doing a video here real soon about this new studio. Um, this is the first room I finished in my basement, part of my uh, basement renovation project that I started when I moved into this house in September 2021. It is taking longer than I planned. Uh, I'll explain more about that in, my, in, my, in a future video, but I just haven't had all the time that I've needed in order to do that. And everything just takes longer than what you anticipate. So, but uh, yeah, here we go. So anyway. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and have a fantastic day.